Friends, let's talk a little bit about discernment today. Over the last month, there's a situation that I was presenting before God, like, God, you know, what is your stance on this matter? Like, what do you want me to do um, in this? What are you saying in this? And yesterday, something critical happened that I want to share with you because it's a very important lesson. And as I was meditating on this thing, um, I felt like, you know, the Lord was saying to me about discernment that, you know, really, truly, to discern, you can only discern the will of God based on the amount of the word of God and the knowledge or the revelation of the character of God that you possess. Stay with me. Let me explain this. I want you to think about what happens with people who, you know, um, are trained to see if money is counterfeit. Okay. So those people go through loads and loads and loads of training. They're not trained to recognize a counterfeit by looking at fake patterns. They are taught to recognize an original. Does that make sense? They're trained for them to be able to discern the originality of money. So when they're looking at counterfeit money, they are not looking for signs of fakeness. They are looking at markers of originality and seeing if the markers of originality exist in the bill that they're looking at. Because friends, people who make counterfeit money make it look like the real thing, right? They, they, they've gone through extricate lenses and processes to produce what looks like the real thing. So my friends, you as a human being, you have your voice, you have the enemy's voice, and you have the Lord's voice competing for your attention. Always know that, that in anything that you're trusting God for, or in any prayer, in any situation, there is your voice. There is a voice of the Lord, and there's the voice of the enemy. And unfortunately, because they're all happening within yourself, you may not be able to always tell the difference because it's not like God is going to come and say, here I am, my child, and then that you know that it's the Lord, and the enemy is going to come and say, I am the devil. It's not like that. Sometimes, you know what, you will think you've heard God when it's your own voice. Sometimes you will think you heard the enemy when it's the Lord's voice. So discernment is being willing to, it's not even a willingness, discernment happens when someone has gone through the process of training. If the money people would take years to train someone to recognize the intricacies of real money, right? What more as children of God? God was saying to me that, Christina, your discernment about my will in a matter should always be starting from the lens of, is God's character reflected in what I am seeing? Okay, for example, this person, let's just think about relationships because that's a key thing for a lot of people, right? This person that I'm trying to date, yes, they're a Christian or yes, they're a praise and worship leader. Yes, they even minister the word of God. But when I'm around them, how I feel or how the relationship is or their consistency or or their their way of... How, the, the, the way that sometimes it's not even about them, to be honest, they could be a good person. They're not doing anything wrong, but how I feel with them or what we talk about or what we end up achieving, does it have the character of God in it? Does it have the imprint of God? Does it have the fingerprint of God? Does it match who God is? That is what discernment looks like. Discernment is not you trying to figure out who's fake or who isn't discernment is having the lens, the magnifying glass of the character of God being the de decider that you'll be able to say, ah, I cannot see the character of God in this. Many people have given testimonies that they've said, look at what the Lord has done and the Lord has not done it. It is our own lives and our own things. And the Lord is probably saying, my child, if only you spent time in my word, if only you knew me, if only you knew my character, you would know that my thoughts towards you are good. I will not send you to be in a place where you are in struggle, love. How can you say that this is my testimony? How can you say that this is the Lord's doing when you are struggling like this? When you are convincing people of your worth and you say, this is my testimony and you say, I brought you this person because they're a worship leader or they're a pastor or they're whoever. If only you knew, like what Psalm 139 says, that the thoughts that I have towards you are so vast. And then you go to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 and you understand that the thoughts are beautiful. The thoughts I have towards you are perfect. They're of good and not harm. So why would you think I would send you in harm's way? Why? And connect that with the Lord. So my friends, we need to be able to be discerning, but based on the character of God. 
Don't put yourself in jobs and relationships and situations where you're saying, but I thought this was the one. I thought I heard God. No, you heard your voice. You heard your desires. And sometimes you heard the enemy because the enemy wants us to connect with people who keep the things in our bloodlines going. Do you understand? The, the, the enemy is happy for you to be married to somebody who if you pair up with him, he keeps the, the, the bondages that were in your bloodline already going. If women in your bloodline were women who are always struggling and striving and proving to men, you, the enemy wants you to be with someone who, who keeps that thing going, right? If you're a man who, you know, in your family, the men seem to always be bossed around by women, the enemy wants you to keep that. So you have to start to ask yourself and go beyond, are they Christian? And dig deep into, I need to know God. I need to know the character of God so that I can discern a counterfeit. Don't spend so much time checking, oh, is this thing, is because you're going to be confused. Because there's going to be aspects of them that's going to be great. And then you're going to be like, maybe, maybe I just need to be more patient. Maybe I just need to be more this. Because you're missing the fact that God in and of himself, he doesn't change. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says to us that the word of God is sharper than any, any other double-edged sword. Separating bone and marrow, dividing things. Bone and marrow, imagine how close they are together. Only the word of God can make those divisions. So discernment, discernment, my friends, don't say it to yourself, I've got the spirit of discernment, what, 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 what. That's, you may have the gift of being sensitive, but discernment in and of itself is trained by the word of God. You have to enter the school of the Holy Spirit to know the character of God, to know how God speaks, to know how God acts. So that like Elijah, when you're faced with a situation where, you know what, what's happening is that the Lord wants to talk to you, but there's an earthquake, you know, and there's a fire, you will stay still because you know that God is not in this. Even though the God, God was in the fire with Moses, God is not in the fire with me right now. You have to know the character of God and stay standing until he speaks. But many of us, we see the earthquake and we're like, look at what the Lord has done. We see the fire. Look at what the Lord has done. And the Lord is like saying, my child, I'm not in that. It looks like it. It looks like money, but it's not money. Look at the footprint. But if you don't know the fingerprint of God because you don't spend time with him, how will you know? Discernment is a muscle that every child of God must train and exercise in the secret place. Reading your word, praying, lingering with the Holy Spirit. May this bless you. And please, please don't accept the enemy's vices and call it God's testimony. Discern through the word.